Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Three Girls, One Monthly Catch-Up, where we share with you all of the things that we have been involved in uh, in the last month. So we're just going to get right into it. You know the drill. We have some categories here. And the first one that we usually start off with is kind of like this wild card category, any kind of random thing you want to share, any type of event, memory, et cetera. Sarah, would you like to go first? Sure. Um, so November was 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 fine. Um, <laughs> I, I think my favorite thing that I actually did in the month of November, and it was actually the last day of November, but it still counts, um, is took a trip to um, the Minnesota Swedish Institute, which adjoins this um, really fancy, like a uh, turn of the century mansion uh, in in Minneapolis, and um, it's all preserved as like a museum kind of thing. And every year they decorate it for Christmas. And so this year, all of the different rooms were decorated according to different like um, Scandinavian and Northern European folklore. So like the dining room was all based on like the artwork of John Bauer. And then there was a room that was all based on the Kalevala, which is the Finnish, Finnish folklore. And like, so, and th that's only just scratching the surface. Like there was a whole bunch of different, there was a, a room that was dedicated to Hans Christian Andersen. Like it was, so wow. it was really cool. Yeah, it was really, really fun. Um, and it was just a great, a, a great thing to see and tour around. It was just, it was all really beautiful and, um, and just fun to see for Christmas. So we did have the in-laws come visit in the beginning of November. And it was kind of dual purpose because it was meant to celebrate my mother-in-law's early birthday. And um, their also their 50th wedding anniversary. So um we they came that that weekend to have just kind of an early dual celebration mm -hmm. so that was you know nice to hang out with them we took them out to like a, a nice dinner and gave debbie her birthday gifts and everything like that and um so debbie and matt they love to antique shop they love to go antiquing there is this um event that happens every few few months in the dc area called the dc flea and mm -hmm. it's this huge antique so you know sarah because you used to live in my area so mm -hmm. it's this huge kind of it takes place at um an expo center so it's this huge um, venue and a bunch of different uh, vendors come to sell different types of antiques and crafts and things like that. So, uh, so we spent a day there. I did find something that I thought was really cute and kind of creepy, which is why I thought it was cute and it's cheap. So I just had to buy it. And <laughs> it's this little kitty cat. <laughs> Oh my God! Okay, I was thinking too big. I'm like, you gotta see this more closely. Okay, yes, that is that is terrifying and delightful. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cute and creepy, definitely. Yeah, that, that is one hundred percent creepy. Yeah, exactly. I was just like, he has to come home with me. Yeah. <laughs> so my house sale did finally go through in November, and I now officially own the home that I've been no. living in in twenty for twenty one years. <laughs> Which is good, which is nice. That's crazy that you've been living there that long. Mm -hmm. I know. Wow. And it was the weirdest thing. It's the weirdest feeling as well because, like, when people buy a house for the first time, it's, you know, they tell you that the purchase has gone through and then you go and pick up your keys and then you move your stuff in and there's a whole experience that comes with buying a house. And mine was not like that at all. Yeah. I <laughs> rang me at lunchtime and said, it's all gone through, the money tr has transferred, it's all done. And I went, okay, that's fantastic. And she went, okay, well, enjoy the rest of your day. And I went, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing in my life has meaningfully changed. Thanks. Exactly. And I just <laughs> carried on working because she called me in the middle of my work day. <laughs> well, so I do have one question. Now that you own your house, are there any like changes you would like to make to it that you weren't able to make to it when you yeah. didn't own it? Or do you want it to say just the way it is? Um. In terms of like structurally and stuff, no, because okay. uh, it's a leasehold. So they still technically I rent the build the land and everything that it's on, mm -hmm. and they own the outside walls. Oh, okay. very strange leaseholds. Gotcha. But but I now that because I haven't been able to move in, mm -hmm. I'm now like okay, but I just want to change everything. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been making lists of like I want 
my living room, I, I know what, what needs to go and what I want to bring in. My bedroom I've has been the same basically since I moved in. So I'm oh, like, I want everything in the bedroom gone and I want an entirely new bedroom. Nice. <laughs> nice. So I've just been going around making lists of, okay, that <laughs> change and I want to do this with the hall that's awesome because awesome. I just need to make it feel new because yeah, yeah otherwise it's, it's just like yeah otherwise you're not getting really any fun happened. out of the fact that you bought yeah. it yeah exactly <laughs> now yeah. that you own it it's kind of like all right yeah. Right on to tarot and oracle Sarah what have been the highlights for you um so I used uh the whole month I used the same oracle and two tarots um, and so for like the first half of the month, I used, the, well, cause I, the Oracle I wanted to use is the, the thistle down Oracle since that was new to me. And so I spent the whole month with the thistle down Oracle. And then the first half of the month I spent with the Oak Ash and Thorn. It's a lot, you know, it's absolutely a lovely deck. I really enjoy it. I love Adam Muller's artwork. I've loved his artwork for a long time. I have some of it hanging on my wall, like, uh, this, you know, this is just like a deck that I adore because the artwork of it is so amazing. And so I had a really wonderful time with it. And then, of course, for the second half, I worked with the Smoke, Ash and Ember naturally because, you know, they're they're two decks and they both go with the Thistledown Oracle. So I will show cards because why not? Even <laughs> though I'm sure everybody is well aware of what this deck looks like. Um, and, you know, these are both two really lovely tarot decks obviously and then of course the oracle all of this looks completely similar because it's all decks done by the and same artist. Else. so <laughs> obviously they work together quite well um you know i will say that like um the oracle was great to work with but it was definitely like a you know the kind of oracle where i'm always going to use this as an adjunct to tarot you know it really is the kind of oracle that's good for just like that one card draw to sort of like button up a reading and like put a put a so sort of overarching message on it. It's really beautiful. I mean, there's not much else to say other than that. Like it wasn't um, there wasn't any kind of real. I don't know, like we interest weird or interesting or magical experience that I had with any of these decks. It, they're just like from a deck standpoint, they're just serviceable decks that work great. Mm -hmm. and so I just spent a whole month with them and enjoyed them, you know? So, so I would say the highlights of my month were um, for tarot wise. I mean, I worked with the, what did I work with? I worked with the soul cats and then also um, this deck right here which is the Wandering Moon Oracle. It's an indie deck. And so I spent a good chunk of time working with this deck because it's new to me and you have some um, changes in the the suit names mm -hmm. of all of the suits. So it, it was a, a little bit of a learning curve um, and it's just a, just a more minimalistic and subtle deck. So actually reading the guidebook was helpful and kind of... Um, better noticing some of the subtleties that lend meaning to the cards that I probably wouldn't have noticed right away on my own because they, um, because it is such a handsy deck, a, a lot of these images would start to kind of look a little bit the same to me. But then after reading the guidebook, it's like, oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I can get on board with, with that explanation. So this one was just a, a really kind of nice and chill time. And it was, it's like a kind of a slow burn deck, getting to know it. And um, it's just, it was just like a relaxed time. There was no rush. And um, it's like, it's like pointillism artwork, you know, with just a bunch mm -hmm. of dots um, mm -hmm. that then shape the image, which I think is so cool. And so, yeah, I just... I, I had a, a great time with this deck and I, I had actually paired this with um, other decks that I had worked with this the past month was Moon Void. So I did mm -hmm. pair this with Moon Void and I liked mm -hmm. those two together, uh, both versions of, that I have of the Moon Void, the um, pink mm -hmm. version and the, the earlier black and white version. So um, so yeah, I, I enjoy this deck. And even though it, you know, it's, it's very just simplistic and that's what I like about it. It has a very kind of calming vibe to it. I won't show you the thistle down because that's... <laughs> <laughs> the risk of being redundant so that was the the deck that I worked with in conjunction with the uh soul cats tarot 
Mm-hmm. And I really, really enjoyed it. And it's interesting because Sarah, you say, you know, this is a deck that would always be kind of like adjunct with, you know, mm-hmm. um, a, a main like tarot or something, which mm-hmm. I did since I, I paired it with the soul cats, I, I found that it worked very well. And, and actually some of the messages were so very spot on that I'm mm-hmm. curious to actually work with it on its own. To see oh, interesting. It okay. Do interesting. On its own. Yeah. May or may not work out. We'll see. But like, mm-hmm. I was like, I, gee, you know, like, honestly, these, these messages are just so on point. Mm-hmm. I wonder, I wonder if I just, you know, left it on its own, how would it do in a reading? So mm-hmm. that's something I might try out in the, mm-hmm the next few weeks. So that was, that was a lot of fun. And then of course, um, I also did Lenormand. I've really been enjoying getting back into Lenormand this year. I feel like I've been working with, you know, a few Lenormand decks and just like getting back into practice. And so this one, um, is the, it's the Brown, Witch Brown, Witch Lenny, um, which I do have a review of on my channel, but in in anticipation of the review, I did um, work with this to see how I would get along with it. Um, this is from Auntie K, and you know it's it's very different in that it it's it's modern. It's a it's a modern mm-hmm. money that um, showcases a lot of like people as mm-hmm. kind of focal points, which I definitely am not used to, um, mm-hmm. and so I was wondering if that would be a cha- challenge and it was actually a fun challenge you know mm-hmm. to get your kind of uh, you know lay Norman juices flowing and it's it's great practice you know just mm-hmm. to work with different types of decks so so yeah this was a good time as well and it just really kind of reinforces like how much I really like lay Norman and I really should just like use it more often I should use it more regularly because every time I do it's like so much fun so I'm trying to think of ways to like make it more of like a regular part you know not just tarot mm-hmm. oracle, like where can I fit in Lena Roman mm-hmm. without then feeling also very overwhelmed by <laughs> trying to use like all the cards and all the decks so I worked with uh two pairs of a tarot and an oracle and I wanted to play I wanted to play a bit with contrast this month just to see how that worked so I started off by pairing tarot of the abyss which is obviously a black and white deck with uh, believe in your own magic, mm-hmm. which was like so you have that contrast of. I didn't realize I got that earlier that I did sizes the other round as well. So you kind of have that contrast of black and white, and then the really really colorful, which I really enjoyed. And they read really well together. Actually, I found that I would draw a tarot, and then the oracle would really complement the message of the tarot really well mm-hmm. and the jarring of the images worked a lot for me mm-hmm. i'm not going to play too many cards because um I, I don't i can't i can't figure out how to do that <laughs> <laughs> oh my brain is shutting down i'm sorry and also the lighting in here is rubbish but <laughs> we should we should explain at some point that we always film these on a weekday when it's after work in the u.s and like late as hell for heather so yeah, like, yeah. it's, 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 it's black it's, it's, it's actually pitch black outside. It's been black always for about four hours. Right exactly. And why I'm always freaking discombobulated when. <laughs> Which is also why I'm really tired by this point. And like, I mean, yesterday I was in bed by now. <laughs> <laughs> and the day before. Oh, oh, the perils oh. of friends in other time zones. And yeah. Zones. So I apologize. Oh, I'm always a bit crap for these videos, but that's why. <laughs> not your fault <laughs> understandable but they are, hey people understand they get it mm-hmm. they know what they know what they're getting when they come yeah, up that's true. We are who we are. Yeah. <laughs> anyway so then i try i decided to swap it around the other way and i did the next world tarot which is very busy and big and lots going mm-hmm. on with the sacred destiny oracle which is really simple and very little going on and again i found that like that just that i i I don't know how i ended up with small tarot big oracle and then big tarot small oracle that was not Mm -hmm. a deliberate choice (laughs) that just seems to have been how it worked out but again these two just like beautifully they just work i did Mm -hmm. just that that busyness and that simpleness combined yeah. created really strong powerful like yeah I 
totally totally get what you're telling me there <laughs> don't really need to do too much work to pull any more out because it's kind of between the two they're giving you everything that you need right. yeah um, I had a really really good time actually doing that this month that's awesome that's awesome so for that one oracle the was it love yourself is it called love yourself oracle or love oh yourself? the um be your own believe in your be own your, be, okay nice. so then there's is that there's a tarot by the same artist yes, it's a cozy, cozy yeah. witch tarot cozy witch are you planning on getting that tarot deck because you have the oracle and i was just wondering if that tarot deck was of any interest to you no i think if it's the one i've seen it's got like messages yeah it has, it has on the card yeah. like the oracle does and while i yeah. really like that in the oracle and i think that works really well and it gives you and although i have been playing a lot around a lot more with actually using the guidebooks with the cards mm -hmm. which is something i don't do but i have been doing with an oracle i think that's great it gives me enough information that if i don't want to drag the, the like get the guidebook out or whatever i've got enough to work with with the tower, I'm like, no, I don't want that in a tower deck. Okay. That's not what I'm looking for. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair so enough. I like the art and I did look at it and I did consider it because I hadn't seen it properly. But then when I saw the like statements on each card, I was like, that's great, but mm -hmm. it's just not personally for me. Yeah, it makes sense. I did the exact same thing because I have the Believe in Your Own Magic Oracle too. And I, I like mm -hmm. it. It's like one of the few sort of other affirmation style oracles I have aside from the align oracle. Um, and, and, and I like it, like it's, it's a, it's a fun oracle. I love the diversity of body types mm -hmm. in it in particular. I love and, it. the sort of real world plus fantasy element to it. Like it's, it's a fun oracle, but like, yeah, the second I saw that there weren't, it wasn't just even keywords on the, on the, the tarot deck but like actual like full statements for each card I was like no th no this mm -hmm. is yeah this and it's and it is it's, it's like game. this isn't it yeah. so you've got like here you've got like the name of the card and then you've got an actual statement mm -hmm. and the tarot deck is the same mm -hmm. I'm like I don't I, I think that I like just the that works with Oracle because of the way that I use Oracle, but with Tara, mm -hmm. that's going to box me into yeah. a space that I won't be able to figure out how to get out of. <laughs> yeah. And it will just, it, I don't think that will work for the way that I like to use Tara personally. Exactly. That makes I mean, sense. 100%. Which is a shame because I do really think it's a fun, it's fun. Like you say, there's really good diversity mm -hmm. in it, especially body size, which you don't mm -hmm. see very much. Yeah. I did have that, Believe, believe in yourself. Is that what it's called? No, really. It's called, look, here, yeah, look. Believe in your <laughs> own magic. <laughs> the struggle is to hold it here <laughs> while you talk in case you need the title again. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, can you tell that I just got off work? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I actually did have that deck as well and then I did end up returning it because while I love the images and that is totally my cup of tea totally mm -hmm. um but the keywords were mm -hmm. what were a bit of a stickler for me I'm like I don't understand this keyword yeah. and how it might relate to this message I feel, like, I feel like with that deck the messages on the cards are very pithy and understandable mm -hmm. the keywords are sometimes a bit abstract like yes they're, yeah. they're, they're quite abstract yeah and so, and like, you've got like yeah. like this one I'm just trying to find some examples uh -huh. I think there are some really good examples but like this one where the title is red uh -huh. and the keyword is forgive and it's like yes. okay but 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 why? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's what I, I'm just like, I don't know that I can get past. This. Yeah. <laughs> and I will say this one pairs really well with the Everyday Witch. Does yeah, I think when that. I first got it, I paired it with the Everyday mm -hmm. Witch because it's mm -hmm. just, it, yeah. Yeah, no, of course. Uh, yeah. Obvi. Yeah, that makes complete sense. Okay. The vibe is like just, yeah. The next category we have is books. So Sarah, take it away. Cool. Um, I haven't uh, done a ton of reading. I um, and this this is where like it, there's a drawback of like all of us doing this together because I think like we influence each other a lot, and I know Heather influences me in particular and what I choose to read. And so I've been reading Hell Bent by Lee Bardugo, which I think Heather talked about like two yeah. episodes ago. Um, but I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Like it's I it's right. actually I like it better than the first one personally. So but I'm only about 65% of the way mm -hmm. into it. So I will we'll see how it goes. But so far, um 
I am really, really enjoying that installment. I guess I'll talk about this in the book section because I don't know where else you would put it. But um, uh, because I've been doing a lot of like craft, crafty stuff this month, um, I spent a lot of time listening to podcasts and ah. I did listen to a true crime podcast that's actually that I actually think is really good and um it's called bear brook it's one of those true crime podcasts where i'm like yeah okay actually this is like this is like really good it's well done it's well researched it's not sensationalized and it's um you know it's doing a really good job of of handling the subject matter um in addition to it being just a very interesting story which i had never heard before of 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 what happened and it's i mean it's basically a mystery where um, the, these bodies are found in barrels in this national park, basically. Mm -hmm. And they're, it, they're first found by a bunch of kids and then later on found by like a hiker and no, but nobody can identify the people who are actually in these barrels. <laughs> like they, 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 they're trying, and this is all back in like, you know, back in the like early nineties, I want to say. So there's not the same like level of technology as there is now for just identifying people. So they're like trying to match these people up with like missing persons from all over the country, but it's, you know, there's no like computerized way to do any of that yet. So it's basically impossible. And then talking about how this case was one of the sort of um, first cases where the use of like familial DNA and like DNA banks for like ancestry uh are used in the solving of a crime but in this case it was used for the identification of the victims who hadn't been identified in like 20 years and so so it's it's actually a really good interesting um podcast so I, i've been really liking that one so one of the books that i finished in november uh i audio read it and it's a, it's an older book that many people already know have read and it's um, Kitchen Confidential by Anthony Bourdain. Just mm -hmm. never got around to reading it. Heard many good things about it over the years. And I just decided, why not? And so, yeah, that was, you know, it was a good time. Um, it's basically about Anthony Bourdain's kind of his um, the different types of training he had to become a chef and the different the random restaurants he would work at and and the skeevy happenings that would go on. <laughs> in these restaurants and um, tips for, you know, maybe what types of cuisine to, um, to avoid ordering on certain days of the week. Don't, you know, don't get fish on Monday. Yeah. Don't get fish on Monday, which I've totally done that. And I'm just like, <laughs> I could either develop a complex about these things yeah. or just remind myself that I'm still alive and I'm okay. So yeah. I'm just going to order whatever I want to order. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, so that was, um, that was an entertaining book. I mean, he's, a, he's a great narrator. He, he's a mm -hmm. great narrator. So, mm -hmm. um, I think that was part of the fun too. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, the other book that I read is this one here. Um, the mm -hmm. language my wish list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really enjoyed this. So this is by Erica Robinson. And it's basically kind of like a, you know, a beginner's like um, Lenormand, you know, 101. And I think this is a, a really good um, a contemporary way to, to, well, I wouldn't say contemporary because actually she is, um, her ways are pretty traditional, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, she doesn't, she doesn't stray too far, but what I like about it is the way in which the language is accessible. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, as you can see, it is not that long. And so for people who m might want to dip their toes in Lenormand, but they are for some reason hesitant, this is just a, like a great succinct way to, uh, just gain some exposure to Lenormand. Um, mm -hmm. So the, again, the language is very accessible. It's not overwhelming at all. He provides, you know, um, yeah, just just great uh, explanations and, and samples for each of the cards uh, without going on for pages and pages and pages. And then like sample exercises that you can do and uh, different types of spreads and things like that. So, I mean, uh, for yeah, so for anyone who feels like you know, maybe a uh, Kathleen Matthews book is a little, a little too much, 
or, mm-hmm. or, you know, even the Rana George, which is, I think is another great comprehensive mm-hmm. book, but it, you have this one, Heather, right? It is, do, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. quite large. It's substantial. So it is quite a bit to get through. So I can see how people would still be intimidated by that. Then I would, I would highly recommend something like this. Um, so yeah, I, I enjoyed it and yeah, I think it's a, it's a great resource. I am in the middle of, um, Mr. Impossible, which is the third book in the Dream Thieves trilogy of the Maggie Steve Fodder mm-hmm. series. So that's a spinoff series to the, um, Raven Cycle novel series where we are, um, following a, a couple of characters that are from the Raven Cycle series. We see them here. It's not the entire gangzy, but it is um, what two of the two of that group and then um, a couple other characters. And I I I like this series. I am losing momentum. I mean, this is no Raven Cycle, let's be real. This is no Raven Cycle series. And it's enjoyable enough. And I feel like, well, I, I, I read the other two. I, I should, I should finish the third and it's fine and it's enjoyable. I, I'm, it's been, I'm definitely been dragging my heels just a little bit, but I told myself that if I finish that book, then I can read fourth wing. That, that is my, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I really want to read. Because <laughs> I was like, that one really- always you're always making deals with yourself. So like, if I read this book, I could if I put this puzzle together, I could put together my BTS Legos. If I yeah, like it's like really yes, kind of I know, I know. To do what you want. <laughs> and I do want to finish this. I do want to finish it. It's I am enjoying it. I'm just I think it is because in my head I do keep comparing it to the Raven yeah. Circle series, and it mm. is just I am um, what well, there's a booktuber I follow who loves the Raven Cycle mm. series. It's one of her favorite like mm-hmm. series and she's just finished those three. Uh-huh. And she wasn't like she she didn't she she was like it's not that I don't like them. It's just that they just don't compare. Yes. And so they feel even worse than they would do <laughs> if I yes. just read them as a standalone <laughs> because not only are they not as not great, but they're also not nearly as good. Yes, yes. <laughs> the series just, that I love. Yes. I've, I've only read the first book in that trilogy. And then I haven't, I ha- like, I've had no motivation to read the next two. Like, I, I read the first one. I possibly enjoyed it, I suppose. But it just is, like, entirely lacking that just magic flavor that the Raven Cycle has. And, like, I don't... I can't even put into words why. Yeah. But it and just it just is not the same. So yeah. and even with the recurring character of Ronan, who you yeah. know is one of my favorites, like Ronan and Adam together, like they were what I mean, loved them, loved mm-hmm. them in the Raven Cycle series. Mm-hmm. And this series, I'm just kind of like, whatever. Mm-hmm. These days I'm rarely the t- type to be like forcing myself you know I'm, I've been so much better about DNFing I DNF with abandon now but for some reason this okay. book like this series in particular I'm I'm having trouble just like because yeah anyway uh, I read quite a bit but I won't talk about everything that I read <laughs> <laughs> I was just talking about two things that I read because so, both of them were great so first of all I read a book which is not should not be my thing like on so many levels it should not work for me and it was amazing so this was a gift for my birthday so I read uh I want to eat your pancreas which sounds like it's going to be some really dodgy horror (laughs) and it really isn't it's really really lovely it's about uh like this is the full bind up of the manga series and it's about this like real loner boy you don't learn his name for you like nobody refers to him as, by his name he's the one telling the story <laughs> and he's a real loner he doesn't have any friends he doesn't engage with the people in, in his class he just likes to read and work in the library and he discovers this journal of one of his classmates Sakura and he doesn't know it's her journal when he re- he starts reading it and he finds out that she's dying she's got like something wrong with her pancreas and it's killing her mm-hmm. and she she sees him read it and tells him that it's true, but he's, and he's the only person who knows. 
So she starts hanging, making him hang around with her so that she can be, she can do all of the things and talk about all the things that she can't talk about with her friends because she doesn't want to tell her friends that she's dying mm -hmm. because she doesn't want to become the friend that's dying. Mm -hmm. And their relationship just like really blossoms and how she brings him out of himself. And it's really beautiful. And like, it's not a spoiler because she's dying. She dies. Like, mm -hmm. That's where the book is going. But when she dies, it's not at all in the way that you expect. Something happens that really blindsides you. I sobbed at the end of this book. I was genuinely okay. crying at the end. This of is this on book. my wish list. So yeah, I've just. I'm not going to give you. I'm not going to tell you why. I'm not going to tell you what happens. But the end is just so sad and so, it's so beautiful all at the same time. It was just like, it was really lovely. Okay. It was really, really lovely. And it was just a really, and it's so quick because it's, I mean, it's manga. So it's, you know, it's right. really, it's mm -hmm. over 400 pages, but you can read 100 pages in like 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So it's a really quick read. It's, just, I, I would recommend it if, if you, it's YA, like they're teenagers. It's, mm -hmm. it's for teenagers. It's a teenage love story. It's very, subtle and sweet because it's also Japanese so they don't you know it's not smutty or anything like that it's just a really lovely story about these two teenagers who just are lovely for each other and their relationship is just really beautiful to watch and it was it was a little bit heartbreaking at the end I did cry <laughs> I was like I'm gonna have to put it down for a minute <laughs> So it was, it was fantastic. Really, really liked it. I would recommend it to anybody. If you're into manga and romance and YA, yeah, you will like it. I think you will really, really enjoy it. And then the other thing that I read was um, Bright Young Women by Jessica Knoll. I thought it was fantastic. This is probably my favourite read of the year. So this is... It's, it is... Fiction, but it's based on true crime, but it's taken true crime and like taken real liberties with the story. So the, the it's about Ted Bundy, but he's never mentioned in the book. He's called mm -hmm. the defendant in the book. You don't really learn anything about him very much at all. And it's actually about the, if you know anything about Ted Bundy, he, towards like the end of his career, he broke into a sorority house and he attacked some girls in a sorority house. A couple of them died. Some of them didn't. And this is a, the, the character who's one of the point of views is a fictional character based on one of the characters in the sorority house. And the whole story is told from her point of view and the point of view of another character who is, again, a fictionalized version of one of his victims. Mm -hmm. He's barely mentioned, it barely talks about his life or his story. It's very much a story about being a woman in the 70s and how crime against women in the 70s was not taken as seriously and was just treated like one of those things that happens and about being a survivor. It was it was really, really well done. I mean, it really humanised Ted Bundy's victims or victims of serial killers at all mm -hmm. in a way that I think true crime sometimes misses mm -hmm. because we talk so much about the killer that yeah. we forget that his victims are actual real human beings and this book really really does that it, and these characters weren't always likable sometimes mm -hmm. they were really irritating because mm -hmm. they were genuinely written like real human beings I just thought this was really well done and very respectfully done. So then next category we have TV and film. Sarah, have you watched anything interesting? Not really, honestly. <laughs> like I have I have not watched a ton of TV. The only thing I have really dedicatedly watched is Bake Off. That I watch it every year and I don't really have much to say about it, honestly. So I'll pass it to Julia. <laughs> I've been meaning to watch the the great. I mean, I've never seen a single one. And Me I, neither. Really? Okay. Really? Me neither. I've never watched a single episode of Bake Off. Wow. You're British. Okay. I know, but I also, I mean, bear in mind, I also don't have a TV. My ah. entire TV watching is Netflix, okay. Disney, and Amazon Prime. But it's not on Netflix. 
I think it is now, but I've just yeah, it wasn't. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. What did I watch in November? One thing that I watched with Matt, uh, uh, it was it came on to Netflix in November actually. So it was a, a newer series, an animation called Blue Eye Samurai, mm. and I the reason I I knew about it was because. As you know, I'm a fan of Abigail Larson, mm -hmm. uh, and she is actually one on the animation design team for okay. that show. And so she was, of course, promoting it on her socials. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this is really interesting. Um, okay, well, obviously, her style of animation would totally be up my street. And um, okay, this might be something maybe Matt would want to check out, too, because he has been all about animation lately all about mm -hmm. animation. So we watched it and we enjoyed it. We enjoyed it. It's basically about, so it takes place um, during the, is it the Endo, the Endo period in Japan. And it's basically, it follows this main character. The um, Edo period. Edo, the Edo period, Edo period. Yeah. Um, and so she, so this main character, she is um, biracial, so half white, half Japanese, and during that time, um, biracial children are considered like shameful. She, it's basically the story. She's on like this kind of vengeance quest mm -hmm. as an adult, um, and she has to disguise herself as a male, and um, so she's on this uh, quest to basically kill four white men who were there in Japan illegally doing shady stuff, and and one of them is probably her father, one of them mm -hmm. assaulted her mother. And so she is the product. She is the, the creature of shame as a result. Mm -hmm. She's just been systematically um, seeking out these, these men to, mm -hmm. to them. So it's, it's basically taking you um, through that. So I, I did find it quite entertaining. Um, it is adult. Mm -hmm. So there are, it, it's violent. It um, there are sexual situations, which is weird because, like, I mean, I look, I've seen animation where characters have sex. I thought it was weird then. I think it's weird now in this. I, I could not <laughs> stop laughing during those scenes. Could not stop laughing, and they're not meant to be funny. But um, anyway, so so if you're not if if you're okay with stuff like that, then this might be worth checking out. Um, but yeah, it's I mean. And it's it is equal nudity. There's a lot of nudity too, but you know, you not only see lady lumps, you see dingleberries, you see it all. <laughs> <laughs> so no, don't do not play this around, children. It's not for kids. It is definitely an adult themed animated series. We also got into um, Demon Slayer, which I had already seen a good chunk of the first season. So that's another Japanese animation. Um, I think it's based on a it's based on manga. I think they yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, so um, he wanted to to start watching that. So I basically rewatched a good chunk of the first season and think we're into the, now we're into the third season, actually. Um, so yeah, that's been, that's been fun. So I found The Golden Girls on Disney. Ah. And I have never seen an episode of The Golden Girls in my life. <laughs> the Golden Girls is fantastic. <laughs> So I know, obviously I knew who they were. I knew like existed. I, you know, I don't live under a rock, but also I was born in the eighties. So it's like not really my time. Mm -hmm. And isn't, I don't think it's anywhere as huge in the UK as it probably was in oh, yeah. the US. But <laughs> so I've literally just this month, whenever I have like half an hour to spare, I just watch an episode of the Golden Girls. That's what I've been doing with my, when I eat my dinner or, like when I'm waiting to do something, I just, and I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving, like literally from the first episode, I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, this is totally my jam. I am loving it. <laughs> there are moments when I think, oh my God, this is so dated. And you can tell that this is the, you know, a product of its time. Mm -hmm. But then on the other hand, it's so progressive. It's very progressive. When it yeah. was written, it's like, yeah. it's, which is just, so it's fascinating to watch that. Mm -hmm. There are some moments where you're like, this is very clearly 80s. <laughs> and other moments where you're like, I can't believe they were saying this in the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's really good. I'm really, really enjoying it. And then, like, again, I've just been, like, watching K-drama and stuff as well. And then, finally, are we on to hobbies? I believe that is our last category. Sarah, 
anything to share? Um, just that I did my first ever live in-person art show, art art sale, and it went really well and awesome. had a really, really good time. And oh, um, okay. yeah, I was I was very worried that, you know, well, like you always worry, you worry that you're going to roll up and everybody's going to like look at your stuff and like point and laugh and be like, what are you doing here? You know, oh. which I mean, I know that that's an irrational thing to worry about, but like, you know, you got like, yeah, 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 it's inside of my head. Sometimes it's a terrifying oh. place. But anyway, um, so I, so I, you know, you get get nervous and everything. But it actually it went great, and I sold a lot of stuff, and I'm very happy with how it went, and it was fun. So, that, and that, that was pretty much it. It was just awesome. just busting my ass to get en enough stuff done for that. And then that was the weekend right before Thanksgiving. So it was like, you know, over halfway through through the month. Um, and then since then, I've just been like trying to get shop orders out the door and, you know, get some Christmas presents done for people and stuff like that. But, um, but yeah, that was, that was really cool. So that's really my main hobby thing that I, I did, but it was, it was kind of a big milestone. I feel really yeah. good about it. Well done you. Absolutely. So is that a yearly thing that takes place? Mm -hmm. So then it you, is. would you do that next year then you would mm -hmm. think? Mm -hmm. Okay. And in okay. fact, this year I, I shared a table with a, a family member who um is actually my mom's cousin's wife <laughs> who I shared a table with. Um yeah. but next year I'm just gonna get my own full table because like I felt like half a table wasn't big enough and like all my stuff mm -hmm. was like kind of really cramped and, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I feel like I could fill up a whole table. So my plan is next year to get a whole table just for me. So so cool. yeah. Fun. It was that's really fun. awesome well congrats oh, i'm so pleased for you yes that's amazing I'm so happy it went well okay well hobby wise yeah i i mean i really didn't do much i finished oh i finished a fucking puzzle this puzzle <laughs> i i have never hated a puzzle so much in all my life i have never and i have never come close to giving up on a puzzle in all my life. Aren't your hobbies supposed to be fun? This no. does not sound like you are having fun. I know, but the, so here's the thing. Hear me out. Like I made a deal with myself. Oh my God, why am I not surprised? <laughs> I know, yeah. I made a deal with myself that if I finish this puzzle, then I can start I can start building my BTS dynamite Lego set that I got for my <laughs> anniversary gift. Because this, so this is part of, um, a lovely subscription gift that my mother-in-law got me for my birthday. So I get like a jigsaw puzzle every month through the mail mm -hmm. and you get a selection of like, you can choose from four. And this one was like a, a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle of, of unicorns, <laughs> which, okay, fine. You know, I like me unicorns. I, it was legitimately, legitimately the hardest puzzle I'd ever done. I, I, I don't, there had never been a puzzle previous to this one where I thought I'm going to quit. I'm just going to fuck mm -hmm. But I was, I was there. I was at a point, but then, you know, I don't know. There's some, there was something in me. I'm like, you're not going to get the best of me. You're not, you know, I was just like, I'm going to finish you. You glittery, you litter, glittery <laughs> unicorns. I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> oh, I, did. I managed to fi finish it this month, but it took me forever. Like, I mean, it did actually take me forever to be fair. I, I mean, it took me longer than it might have otherwise. And at a point where Matt was like, so you gonna finish that <laughs> anytime soon? Because <laughs> I would just at certain points just avoid doing it. You know, I just wouldn't do it. Um, and and he knew that about the deal I made with myself that I wasn't gonna build my Lego set <laughs> until I finished this. So I did. I think it, I think it might have even been Thanksgiving weekend. I don't know. I had some time, and I'm like, I'm I'm gonna get this done and dusted, and I did. Mm -hmm. So I, my new little obsession is Bookstagram. <laughs> so I've been doing, I started a Bookstagram account and I've been oh, playing cool. Instagram and posting things on there and doing reviews and just like, I just wanted a space to talk more about books because I read a lot and I could talk for a very long time about books in these things and I don't want to, but I do want to talk about books. So but I don't want to talk about books on camera too much either. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just felt like a really good place to do it. It doesn't mm -hmm. take too much work and it's fun. Yeah. Um, and oh, I should have said this at the beginning when we were talking about cards actually, but I didn't think about it. Um, 
but I've been playing a lot with Lenormand in November as well. So, which is all thanks to Logan from Larkin Legends, who has this wonderful Lenormand series wow. on his YouTube channel at the moment, which everybody should check out. It's really, really good. He, like he's just got a natural way of teaching, which yes. I think is really lovely. And it encouraged me to get my Lenny deck out. And I've not been doing much of it. Like I've just been doing, pulling a couple of cards every day. Mm -hmm. And then practicing writing sentences for mm. like for the two cards because it's been such a long time since I've done anything with Lenormand. Mm -hmm. So I've just been doing that really for November. And then in December, I, do, I think I'm going to like expand out and maybe do three cards and do some different readings and stuff. Cool. And which, and deck you, which deck? Uh, I've been using the Dreaming Way Lenormand. I've been using it for all of November and into December because I just. I really like this. I do really like this one. I like the art style. So yeah, I've been playing with that quite a bit. Very cool. I might swap it out in the next couple of days because yeah. for some reason I have six Lenormand decks. I don't know why. <laughs> Just, I genuinely don't know why I have that many. Oh God, because they're fun. They're fun. And I like all of my decks for different reasons. Mm -hmm. I've got the Bitmoji one that Julie, I think you mm -hmm. made me that. Yeah. Yep. And somebody sent me like a vintage Alice in Wonderland Lenormand deck. So, oh, wow. which yeah. I'm terrified to use because <laughs> just in case it gets ruined. Did you ever show that on your I channel? don't know if I have. No. Oh, I would love to see it if you're mm, interested. Yeah, I'll have to do it. Out. Well, I think that is now a wrap. And so, thank you so much for joining us for um, this monthly catch up. Our next Three Girls Live will be coming up January 6th on Saturday, usual mm -hmm. day of week and time. So be sure to um, check that out. Join us in the live chat or, you know, there will always be a, a playback available. So thank you again. And until the next time, much love and take care.